If you're like me, you prefer to work in macOS, not Windows. The only problem with Microsoft is they just have no taste. But if you work in IT, you've probably heard that, well, you can't exactly join a MacBook Air to an Active Directory domain, and there aren't any other solutions out there that will allow you to effectively manage Apple devices, at least not robust tools that will work in enterprise IT. Well, this simply is untrue. And in this video, I'm going to show you how the Fortune 500s like Google, IBM, and even Apple manage thousands of Apple devices, not just MacBooks, by the way, iPads, iPhones, and yes, this is an iPhone 4, best iPhone made, and even Apple TVs for those conference rooms. This tool that we're gonna look at is called Mosul, and it's actually what we use internally to manage our Apple devices. Not only can it do device management, it can help you with compliance, ID authentication, and so much more that we're going to dive into. I want you to see the power and capabilities of an enterprise level MDM, even though you're probably not gonna use 90% of the functionality. So without further ado, let's dive right into the interface. Now I'm logged into our test account and I've kind of reset some things so we can kind of see what it would look like for the first time that you're gonna log in. And the first tab we have here is our dashboard. And I'm just gonna run through these really quickly. We can see right in the middle top, our enrolled devices, both iOS, macOS, and tvOS. Uh, and then we can see some information about possible alerts here on the left. Uh, maybe we need to configure our push notification certificate, which expires on an annual basis. This is actually how we push out commands to these devices. We use the Apple Push Notification Network. So if that certificate is expired and it's not renewed with Apple, you're not going to be able to talk to your devices. And we have a number of other alerts like OS updates available, storage almost full, duplicate serial numbers. I've never seen that one. That'd be really interesting if you have duplicate serial numbers. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, we can take a look at our support ticket. Now, the keen among you probably have noticed this security tab. What is this? Well, there actually is a compliance center built into Mosul. That's right, a compliance center. No, this is not a Microsoft product. This is an Apple solution. So we'll, we'll get into that in a bit. The next tab we're going to go into is the organization tab. Now, think of this as the global settings for your MDM. This is where we can assign roles to administrators, import users, integrate with ID authentication services such as Azure or Google, and do a number of other things like modify the logo, set up that push notification certificate I mentioned earlier, and integrate with Apple Business Essentials or Apple Business Manager. Now the next section here we're gonna talk about is the enrollment section, and I can make an entire video just talking about device enrollment. But what you need to know in short is that there are two types of ways that we can enroll devices. The first is open enrollment. If you've ever installed a VPN app on your iPad or on your Mac, you know that you need to install a configuration profile. And this is how open enrollment works, but the profile has much more permissions and capabilities than a VPN configuration profile. And this is great for devices that are already in the fleet, maybe need to do a rapid deployment, but there are some cons here with open enrollment. These devices are not going to be what we call supervised devices. This means that there's a number of limitations. Number one, the user can remove the NBN profile. Number two, you aren't able to manage software updates for the device. You can just notify the user, so you can't force any updates. And if you have a small fleet, this probably isn't that big of a problem because you can just run around and do those devices manually. But if you have a larger fleet and you're in the hundreds of devices, this is gonna be a deal breaker. Fortunately, very recently, Apple has given us an ability using the Apple Configurator 2 uh, iOS app to put a device into the second type of enrollment. And this is going to be DEP or the Device Enrollment Program. DEP is, I kind of touched on it earlier, uh, what allows us to retroactively deploy devices in MDM from startup and initial configuration. So if you purchase a device with your Apple Business team, it goes into Apple Business Manager. From there, it flows into your MDM solution. That device is going to be enrolled using DEP. So again, open enrollment, just download a configuration profile and let it rip. Have limited control though, not going to be supervised, can't run iOS, can't run up OS updates, and the user can remove the profile. DEP, any device you purchase from your Apple business team is automatically DEP, and you can get an existing MacBook into DEP using uh, your iPhone and the Apple Configurator 2 app, and this is really what you should be doing if you have the capability. If I go to automated device enrollment, you can see that we have a configuration profile for device enrollment. I just wanna show you what this looks like. If I click into here, you can see there's a technology that they call Embark. And what this allows us to do is customize the enrollment experience. 
We can do a number of things, such as install the MDM profile. We, well, we have to do that. Uh, we can give the device an initial name. Maybe you want to name it new device so your IT department can see a new device has been added. And we can bypass a number of the settings, such as uh, skipping Apple Pay, skipping Siri, skipping uh, accessibility, or skipping Apple's privacy policy. Whatever you want to do, just tick the box and that will be done. Additionally, we can go ahead and prompt the user to create an account, either an admin account or a standard account. In Key, this is really cool, we can also create an additional local account during setup and make an administrator account and hide it. And we can pre-fill this account information as well. This is usually the best practice. You create a hidden IT or admin account and then the user is prompted to create a standard account. Now, this is assuming you're not using an authentication service. If you're using Google or Azure Active Directory, I think they renamed it to Azure something ID to be complicated, but I'm just gonna call it Azure ID because that's what it really is. If you're using Azure AD, you can actually configure this so they're gonna see the login window, they'll authenticate with their Microsoft credentials, and then that's gonna create a local user account with the same username and password. It's a full macOS local account, but it is integrated to your ID provider. And I mentioned Google and Azure. You can use a number of other authentication providers as well, even a local Active Directory server if you want to. By the way, here's what that authentication setup looks like. If we change device enrollment to authenticate with AD during device setup, that's where you would actually integrate Microsoft Active Directory. Pretty cool. Like I said, I can make an entire video on enrollment, but we're gonna move on because we got a lot to cover. Now, the management tab is where we are going to manage all of our devices. Mac OS, tvOS, iOS, iPadOS, all those devices are gonna be managed here. And let me give you a walkthrough of the layout of this page. Now, once we get over to the management tab, on the left-hand side, we have the option to switch between Mac OS, tvOS, or iOS devices and configuration profiles are unique to each of these. This is something different than Apple Business Essentials. Apple Business Essentials will allow you to apply the same, for example, Wi-Fi configuration profile to iOS, macOS, etc. Can't do that in Mosul. Moving on to the meat and potatoes of MDM. This is probably, when you think of MDM, what you've been waiting for, and that is configuration profiles. So let's take a look at what we have for configuration profiles. We can install applications, packages, AD certificates. We can issue custom commands. We can even modify and lock the dock. So if you want to have like specific apps there, uh, we can go ahead and assign domains, customize a login window, network relay, printer. We can rename devices uh, to a particular scheme. We can add restrictions. We can do VPNs, wallpapers, Wi-Fi authentication. And there's actually a lot more if we click on this button here we can see a number of other things that we can do. We can install books, change accessibility settings, enable AirPlay, uh, AirPrint, AD certificates, Apple Remote Desktop, Apple Lock. Uh, we can configure the calendar to point to a specific uh, CalDAV, or a CalDAV account. Uh, we can manage Chrome. So if you're using Chrome like the rest of the world, you can actually lock it down so that users can only log into the a Google account that is under your domain. So they're not gonna be able to log into their personal account. You can uh, automatically install particular plugins or block certain plugins from being installed. A essential, especially in this very Chromium heavy environment, which by the way, Chrome's a big security vulnerability. This is a big deal. If you're still running an Exchange server on-prem, you can connect to that. You can deploy fonts. If you have a company font book, you can deploy that through here. This profile right here is actually very interesting. This is the local user profile. So maybe you're not using Microsoft AD or Google Workspace in terms of well, at least using it to authenticate on these devices. In that case, you can just make a local user account using this configuration profile. And you can change the password using that profile as well. You can set password policies, although if you're using AD or Google, you're gonna do it through there. You can also use passkeys, which is a brand new configuration profile. And frankly, it's not one that I've used yet. So maybe we'll explore that in a future video. We've even got the ability to set up system migration or even set custom NTP servers for the Mac. Now, if you're not seeing the functionality that you need in a standard configuration profile, don't worry. Uh, Mosul support can actually help you write uh, a script or write a custom terminal command to execute uh, that particular configuration that you're desiring. If you have worked in Windows and you're familiar with writing PowerShell scripts and you're comfortable in that world, I wanna tell you that not only can you do that in Mac OS through the Bash uh, terminal, you it actually just is better. Uh, Unix is way more solid. It just generally works uh, more than the Windows 11 or 10 uh, PowerShell, uh, especially 
considering that in general, applications are installed in the applications folder, not randomly anywhere on the computer. Awesome, so we've got our MacBook Air. It's been freshly wiped and had the latest version of Sonoma installed on it. Uh, I've also created a local admin account that we're just gonna call the IT account, and it's that account that we're gonna use to install our configuration profile. This profile is gonna be an open enrollment since we're not gonna enroll this in DEP. This device was purchased not as part of any business account or anything like that, and we're not gonna go through the process of doing DEP just now. We're just gonna do open enrollment. However, that does mean we won't have some of the functionality such as being able to install software updates uh, on the device. Now, it's my recommendation that when you're enrolling devices into MDM, you use the opportunity to go ahead and wipe the devices, install a fresh copy of Mac OS, and just give yourself a clean slate for simple and easy management. You don't have to do this. You can absolutely install a configuration profile on a device that's already been set up. However, if you have devices that have been used by users that are not in some sort of device management solution, Odds are you probably could use a clean install of macOS. Yeah, I know macOS generally doesn't get gunked up as bad as Windows does, and we're even close, but maybe you have some versions of McAfee running with that got installed with you know that Adobe software. Maybe there's duplicate software running. Maybe there is malware, who knows? It just is a great time. If you're gonna cause a disruption, might as well just do it right and be done with it and have a really uh, good spot to hit the ground running with uh, your new MDM solution. So. Enough rambling, let's go ahead and get a configuration profile and install it on this MacBook Air. So we're gonna head on over to the Organization tab. We're gonna to go to Enrollment, and then we're gonna to go to Manual Enroll using Safari URL. Now, Open Enrollment is designed to enroll existing devices, maybe even devices that you don't have direct access to. And so you just need to go ahead and email this link to an administrator of the device, and they can download the configuration profile and actually install it themselves. I'm gonna go ahead and airdrop that link to this MacBook Air. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the downloads folder and here is our configuration profile. I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on it and then it's gonna open in settings. Now, sometimes it doesn't open automatically in the settings app. Open up system settings and navigate to security and privacy. I'm gonna scroll down till we get to profiles all the way at the bottom. And then here we can see our configuration profile. Let's go ahead and double click on that. And as we can see here, this is going to allow Mosul to do a number of things on our device. So we're gonna go ahead and click Enroll. Drop a like on this video if you think the old system preferences menu was a better layout and this one was designed for an iPad, which a Mac is not. And we kind of see other configuration profiles coming in here. And a lot of these are standard, just basic configuration profiles for Mosul. Now let's head back over to our management tab now we can see the device in the management tab. And if we come right here, we make this a little bit bigger. We can see how full the hard drive is. We can see if it has Bluetooth enabled, if they're signed into the App Store. We can take a look at the exact model when the last update with Mosul was. And if we click on the device, we have a lot more options here. I'm just gonna scroll through this pretty quickly to give you guys an idea. Uh, we can see some device information, its current operating system, if there's an update available. Uh, we can assign it to a user. This will automatically create an account depending on your configuration. We can get some more information about everything from the serial number to the CPU model to the MAC address, whatever you need in terms of information, it's probably right here. We can see if we have any Google Chrome extensions, installed printers, asset tags, if you're using asset tags, etc. Just a lot more information. Security info, apps, commands, uh, profiles. You, you get the idea. There's, there's a lot that we can do here. And if we go to more, we can see a lot more options. We can lock the device, wipe it, turn off and on Bluetooth, power cycle the device, erase it, install Rosetta 2 if we know they're gonna be using Intel-based applications or x86 applications. Uh, and we can remove the device from MDM. This is the only place you can do that, by the way, if you're looking for that toggle. Uh, well, you could actually just uninstall the profile on the device because it's DEP. It's not DEP, but in terms of the admin console, that's the only place that you can do that from. Awesome, so we got the device enrolled in MDM and we've talked about some of the configuration profiles that you can assign to it. Things like Wi-Fi, security, uh, local accounts, and, and so much more. But there are still two more tabs we have to look at, DNS filtering and security. Now let's take a look at security first. This is gonna blow some minds, so are you ready for this? But we actually have compliance control built into Mosul MDM for device management. This is insane. And the crazy part is, if you're a Microsoft user, this is really gonna blow your mind. 
this is not an extra license. It's included with Mosul Fuse. There's no extra E3, E5, E16, whatever. It just is in here. And you can use as many standards as you want to. So let's go ahead and say we want, um, let's go ahead and do uh, their recommended practices. That's great. Let's go ahead and do NIST um, and we'll do SOC 2 as well. And then let's go ahead and assign this. Uh, we can do it to our specific device. Or actually, you know what? Let's go balls to the wall. We're just going to assign this to all of our devices and we're going to click start. As you can see, here are all the rules it's going to apply to our device. And the first one is antivirus. Mozilla has a pretty cool light antivirus, which is perfect for macOS that they have built. And some of these rules, by the way, it's gonna automatically do and create configuration profiles. Other ones, it's going to prompt you to do. And so if I were to hit refresh here, I doubt we're gonna see anything right now, but over time, some of these are gonna go green. Uh, and right now they are all red. Uh, and then like so many of these, it's gonna go ahead and apply them automatically. There's also some other things we have here. We can see our detection and removal for potential malware. Uh, we can enable admin on demand. Like what is admin on demand? Well, best practice is that an end user is not an administrator, but this creates a problem. What if they need to update Zoom or Adobe? Adobe is notorious for requiring administrative privileges in order to be able to be updated. And there's really not an easy way to automate that. However, there's a function using self-service where you can allow a user to request to be an admin for 60 seconds. This enables them to run those updates. Phenomenal, really cool piece of tech. Now, we could probably do an entire video series on the security tab within Mozilla. They're constantly adding new things, but if your organization needs SOC 2 compliance or NIST and you're running macOS, Mozilla is a no-brainer in my book. Well, let's go ahead and move on to DNS filtering. And here's where we can actually configure custom DNS on the device level. You know, we have these devices that are mobile. They're not in an office anymore, and they're not always on the VPN. And so you can actually create custom uh, DNS configuration profiles uh, where you can specify specific uh, things to be blocked uh, or even do it by category and use their existing uh, books of DNS items that can be blocked or allowed, which is pretty cool. We're not going to go into that because there is one more feature that I skipped over earlier in the management tab that I want to show you, and that is the install application profile. Now there's two ways, well, three ways that you can install applications via MDM on a device. You can do it through, do so through the App Store using VPP, Apple's Volume Purchasing Program. But that's only gonna work for things that are in the App Store. Classically, Adobe, Chrome, apps that are very commonly used are not in the App Store. The other thing you can do is you can apply a custom package. Now this is gonna require you to bundle it, you gotta host it on a server somewhere, you gotta make sure that server is secure and the device has access to it. You gotta update the package as the application gets updated. It's a royal pain. Instead, what Mozilla has done is they've managed an entire library of applications for you. And I wanna show you what that looks like because it was a game changer when it came out and it's really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and add a new profile here and then we're gonna give it a name. We're just gonna call this test. And then we're gonna choose installation source. We're gonna go ahead and choose Mozilla Catalog, which is the library that they've built for us. And we're gonna add an application. And as you can see, we have a long list of applications here. Like we got, Adobe, Alfred, AirCall, 1Password. We've got uh, App Cleaner. We've got Asana. We've got so many apps that as Mac users, we just are know and are familiar with. Let's go ahead and choose Brave. And then we're gonna install that on this MacBook Air. We're gonna automatically install apps after saving the profile. And then we're gonna assign it to specific devices. Let's go and assign it to our MacBook Air. We're gonna click apply. Now, installing apps is one of those things that can go wrong, and it does happen because it involves variables on every device. But you can see we have this really cool status indicator, and if I click refresh, it's still orange. What does orange mean? It is pending commands. It looks like the status has been updated, and we have a light greenish color, which is gonna mean that we are queued. I'm gonna go ahead and click refresh again. And we're solid green, which means the app has been installed, and if I look on Launchpad, Yep, there it is. There's the Brave browser installed over MDM, not from the App Store, directly from Mozilla's packages. I want you guys to think about that. We just installed an application that is not in the Apple App Store on a Mac without even touching it. That's pretty cool. Now, it took about five minutes for that entire process, but keep this in mind too. This is a pretty old MacBook Air, and I have Comcast, and we're running over Wi-Fi. I've seen this process take literally 60 seconds or less when we're you know, using something like a fiber internet connection and maybe a machine that's not you know, seven years old 
uh, to deploy an application. It also depends on the size of the application, you know, what other tasks are running. But this is pretty neat. And you could do this anywhere in the world, mind you. This Mac could be in Tahiti, and as long as it has access to the internet, it's gonna receive and download that application. This is very different than the world of Active Directory where you have to be on the same network. So is it true that there aren't tools out there to manage Apple devices in the enterprise? Well, you enterprise guys tell me down in the comments below. And if you do need help deploying this tool, feel free to reach out to us. We are an Apple Consultants Network member, as well as a partner with Mosul. So not only can we help you deploy Mosul MDM, we can also help you manage it on an ongoing basis as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And until the next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.